The FBI War on Tupac Shakur and Black Leaders by John Potash. All right, at 6 p.m. in New York City at 99.5 FM, WBAI and WBAI.org. A new book, The FBI War on Tupac Shakur and Black Leaders, took its author, John Potash, hundreds of interviews and 12 years to complete. Potash argues the FBI and police intelligence used similar tactics and personnel to target Tupac as they had his Black Panther parents. And finally tonight, did a special unit of the FBI orchestrate the murder of rap artist Tupac Shakur? Does new evidence support how U.S. intelligence targeted Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, the Black Panthers, Jimi Hendrix, Bob Marley, rappers, and linked ethnic leftists? Potash will be at two book signings this weekend following a sellout in Harlem two months ago. WBAI's Evening News asked him what he hopes people will learn from his book. We're going to be offering a book and DVD. The book is The FBI War on Tupac Shakur and Black Leaders by John Potash, and uh, the DVD of the same name is going to be offered. The book can be yours for a pledge of $80. You're listening to WPFW, Washington, D.C., 89.3 FM, on your dial. The subtitle of this book is U.S. Intelligence's Murderous Targeting of Tupac, MLK, Malcolm, Panthers, Hendrix, Marley, Rappers, and Linked Ethnic Leftists. The book includes over a thousand endnotes referencing over a hundred personal interviews the author conducted, hundreds of pages of court documents, and hundreds of pages of FBI and CIA documents. The author attained many of these through a Freedom of Information Act request. For the sake of legitimacy, it should be said that activist leader Fred Hampton Jr. gave an afterword for the book. Pam Africa, head of the International Friends and Family of Mumi Abu Jamal campaign, wrote a foreword for the book to which former journalist turned top political prisoner Mumia Abu Jamal contributed. Regarding the Freedom of Information Act, this author paid for what was incidentally said to be over 4,000 pages in Tupac Shakur's FBI file. Here's the Department of Justice letter verifying that payment for these pages. The Department of Justice alleged reasons of national security for only sending 99 pages. Nonetheless, the other collected research and thousands of pages of mostly mainstream newspaper and magazine articles as well as close to a hundred research books and videos substantiate the theme of this book. The collected research shows that a review of U.S. intelligence's targeting of the Shakur family offers a window into the targeting of key leftist black and ethnic leaders for over four decades. Similar tactics and personnel that were used against both conventional leftist leaders such as Martin Luther King Jr. and Robert F. Kennedy were used against more grassroots leaders such as Malcolm X, Huey Newton, and other Panther leaders. Similar tactics and personnel were also used against leftist musicians, ranging from Harry Belafonte and Jimi Hendrix to Bob Marley and political rap artists. Tupac Shakur's leftist legacy started with his mother, Afeni Shakur, a one-time Black Panther leader of the Harlem, New York chapter. She had married Harlem Black Panther chapter founder Lumumba Shakur. Lumumba's father, Sayuddin Abba Shakur, had been a close associate of Malcolm X. Lumumba, his brother Zaid, and their adopted brother Matulu had joined Malcolm X's Organization of Afro-American Unity shortly before Malcolm X's assassination. Malcolm X had formed this group as an American connection to an organization formed by independent African leaders, the Organization of African Unity. Malcolm X was the only American that these African leaders allowed to attend their meetings. Malcolm X warned these African leaders about the racism of America's top corporation owners and their likely desire to take advantage of the leaders to gain cheap access to their minerals, oil, and other resources. This led the African leaders to reconsider $100 million deals with these exploitative companies, which was a leading motive to the company owners possibly ordering Malcolm X's assassination. Huey Newton and Bobby Seale had organized with groups working with the Revolutionary Action Movement, or RAM, in 1966. Ram had started a Black Panther Party in Philadelphia, New York, and then Los Angeles. Maxwell Stanford, seen here, and Herman Ferguson started Ram. 
they used the panther symbol that Stokely Carmichael had used for his Lowndes County, Mississippi Freedom Party. Carmichael and H. Rap Brown headed the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, or SNCC, which acted as the student arm of Martin Luther King's group. By October of 1966, Huey Newton and Bobby Seale decided to start their own new group, the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense, in Oakland, California. They wanted to differentiate themselves from Ram's Black Panther Party by using more militant means of defending themselves and other blacks against rampant police brutality. They brought guns and law books to scenes of police beating on blacks. They read the rights of the victims and legally pointed guns at the officers to make them stop. Governor Ronald Reagan ended up changing the law because of them. They also developed a 10-point plan that involved free health care for all, free and black-centered education for all, amongst other ideas to fix society's ills. They further enacted these plans by attaining contributions from neighborhood businesses to fund the free breakfast programs and health centers they started. Their fame, membership, and programs quickly spread across the country. The next biggest chapter soon arose in Los Angeles, headed by John Huggins and apprentice Bunchy Carter. New York Times bestselling author Eldridge Cleaver had joined the Oakland Black Panther National Leadership as their Minister of Information. His soon-to-be wife, Kathleen Cleaver, gained the position of National Secretary of Communications, a national spokesperson for the group at many events. Huey Newton and Bobby Seale signed Stokely Carmichael and H. Rapp Brown as honorary East Coast Black Panther leaders. In New York City, Abba Shakur joined the Revolutionary Action Movement's New York Black Panthers. In 1968, the Oakland-based Black Panther Party for Self-Defense assigned Lumumba Shakur to head the Harlem Black Panthers. Within months, Tupac Shakur's mother, Afeni Shakur, joined the Harlem chapter and then married Lumumba Shakur. The National Panther leadership had assigned Lumumba's childhood friend, Siku Odinga, who had also joined Malcolm X's group before he died, to head the Bronx Black Panther chapter. They named Lumumba's brother, Zay Shakur, as the Bronx Black Panthers Minister of Information. Tupac's uncle Thomas McCreary helped lead the Brooklyn Panthers. U.S. intelligence attacks on the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense started in 1967. Police had a list of Black Panther member license plates when they pulled Huey Newton over and got into a shootout with him. Bullets killed one officer and wounded Newton. Courts eventually acquitted Newton of this charge, but not before several years in jail and worldwide protests over his imprisonment. In 1968, a gunman assassinated civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. Dr. King's friend, a journalist named William Pepper, later became an attorney teaching at Oxford University and spent over 20 years investigating MLK's assassination. Here he is seen with Dr. King's family where he represented them at an historic 1999 trial they won against a government co-conspirator involved in King's assassination. William Pepper wrote a first book on the investigation, Orders to Kill, and a second book on the trial, Act of State. Pepper said that U.S. intelligence, meaning the CIA, the FBI, military intelligence, etc., orchestrated Martin Luther King's assassination with the help of local mafia. Pepper said they did this partly due to King's mobilization of poor and working-class people to struggle for better wages and to oppose the Vietnam War. Some of Pepper's evidence included a copy of orders a Special Forces Group sniper or Green Beret gave him, seen here. This backup sniper, ready to finalize the assassination if the first shooter missed, separately confirmed another backup sniper's account. Another piece of evidence is this photo of a reported CIA agent jumping down from where the bullets came several minutes after the assassination. Here is an FBI counterintelligence program called COINTELPRO document detailing U.S. intelligence's concern that another radical black leader could rise up in the way Malcolm X had. The document talks of preventing the rise of a messiah who could unify and electrify the militant black nationalist movement the document said that Martin Luther King Jr. was the leading candidate for this role. While most people seem to understand that MLK was not a militant black nationalist, but a leader who fought racist institutions, MLK evolved to struggle for economic and social justice. Malcolm X had also evolved to become more inclusive of all races in his movement for social and economic justice. In the days following MLK's assassination,